Yeah, I think uh, I think these alpha flies have reached the uh, the end of their life. I get some new new race shoes. Let's go see what uh, Nike has to offer. I think they just came out with new uh, vapor flies. shoes, road, and they're probably going to be pretty expensive. Let's sort it by price, high to low. They have my size. Whew. Alrighty. Well, that intro, pretty over the top and took much too long to film, much longer than I would like to admit. But big thank you to my great friend and roommate, Ryan, for helping me out. I definitely would not have been able to film it without him. But the reason why I went so over the top with the intro is because this video, it's pretty special. Welcome to the review of the never before seen, well, you might've seen it on social media, but definitely not in person, Nike Vaporfly 3. Well, they're oh, wow. kind of new. They're definitely new when I first bought them, which was uh, three to four weeks ago. And in the short three to four weeks, I've put on, I think, 35 to 40 miles, which means in another three weeks, I'm going to have to buy another pair. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But I ran on the track, on the treadmill, and most recently, I finished an Ironman in these shoes. Just the run portion, that is. I didn't swim or bike in them, that would just be silly. So I definitely do have my thoughts on what I think about these shoes, and in today's review, I'm gonna be telling you what I like about them, what I dislike, and I'll also be comparing them to some of the other super shoes that I've worn in the past. But before we get into the review, if you are new to this channel, my name is Parker. I'm currently actually a triathlon coach. I coach for NVDM Coaching. Speaking of coaches, if you are looking for a running coach, triathlon coach, definitely make sure to hit me up. I'll have my email in the description box below. And right next to that description box is a big red subscribe button. If you could go ahead, hit that, I would truly appreciate it. it helps out this channel. Why wouldn't you wanna see more videos about me talking about $250 shoes or just triathlon content in general? But before I was a coach with NVDM Coaching, I was actually just a runner. I have a two 44 30 244 32 marathon pr not off the bike that's just running straight and my marathon pr in an ironman is 305 so definitely not elite by any means but i do like to think that i know a thing or two about running and shoes in general so that's kind of why i'm making this video plus i had a bunch of friends asking me to make a review video and letting them know if they should buy these shoes or not so speaking of which let's get into the review i'm going to split this up into a few different sections the first i'm going to talk about kind of facts and figures the specs then in the second part of this review i'll go into what i like and i dislike then i'll talk about comparing this shoe to some of the other super shoes i've tried in the past and then we'll finish off with my closing thoughts isn't that a good way to end a review video with what i think of them all right so part one here we go the facts and figures Now, as I did just mention, these are not cheap, as it shouldn't be any surprise since they do come from the one and only Nike, and they are the Nike's top of the line racing shoes. Well, almost the top of the line. I think the Alpha Flies are a bit more expensive. Those come in at $275. These, however, will put you back 200 
and fifty dollars plus the shipping which will be another ten twenty dollars and pack so i believe i paid two hundred and seventy nine dollars for these shoes so definitely not cheap so now that you said goodbye to all your money <laughs> let's talk about some more facts and figures next up we have the drop and i actually didn't know what a drop was until i did some research for these shoes and the drop is actually the height or the difference in the height between the heel and the forefoot and for these vapor flies i'm trying not to get my alpha flies and vapor flies mixed up because as you guys saw in the intro the first ratio i had was actually the alpha fly one but yes these are the vapor fly threes so we have a 38 millimeter stack height in the back and the heel and a 30 millimeter stack height in the front which gives us an eight millimeter drop 38 minus 30. and so it's definitely not the most I don't know aggressive shoe or rolly shoe I guess I don't know I'll get into that in my likes and dislikes you don't get the most roll with these shoes as with some of the other super shoes on the market but now moving on to the third fact and figure the probably the third and final one the weight and boy these shoes are light these are probably no they are definitely the lightest shoes I have ever felt ever put on my feet they came in now I have a size or these are a size nine and a half so obviously if you have a bigger foot then they may be a bit heavier if you have a smaller foot then they may be a bit lighter but this size nine and a half they came in at 198 grams i believe which is just under seven ounces yeah that is light and that's actually even with these uh quick tie laces and the laces that came with them with the shoes were even lighter so you're probably looking at maybe 100 i don't know how many grams for the laces but 190 grams so between six and a half and seven ounces with these shoes you really you barely feel like they're on your feet all right so now that we got the facts and figures out of the way let's move on to part two which i believe are the likes and dislikes of the shoe So I guess we'll start off with the dislikes because it's so short. The really the only dislike I have with these shoes is the tongue. Uh, that's honestly, it, the tongue is a bit, I don't know, I'll show you guys. I still have this thing in here. I want to keep the shape, but the tongue, as you guys can see, I'm not sure. It's just a bit weird. It's a bit big, obtrusive. It takes up a lot of space and it's not like heavy or anything like that. It's just a little awkward. I want to say not necessarily uncomfortable, but yeah, just awkward um, that's the best way to describe the tongue i think if you guys want to see for yourself but i don't really think it impacts the performance of the shoe whatsoever it just when you're putting on the shoe you have to think a little bit harder of how you're putting on the tongue if that makes any sense but honestly that's the only dislike i have with this shoe so far oh and maybe you're gonna get this with any super shoe i guess but it doesn't obviously it lasts too long that's just after as i mentioned 40 miles and i really only ran on the track on the road and on the treadmill and so i'm already kind of seeing quite a bit of wear and tear on here so i don't expect these shoes to last me more than 150 miles but honestly i'm just going to be wearing these for races so these could last me definitely a year year and a half depending on how often i race but I would not pick these up if you're looking for like an everyday trainer. If you have $250 to spend on an everyday trainer, well then go ahead and get them. But if you're looking for uh, just uh, like a track shoe or a speed shoe, I would not go with these because these will not last you long. If you do buy these, save these for race day. So now moving on to my likes of this shoe, honestly, everything else. Probably my biggest like about them is the weight. As I mentioned, they are so light, especially for me when I'm competing in half Ironman Ironmans. My legs are pretty darn tired coming off of either biking 56 miles or 112 miles. So last thing I want is extra weight on my legs. And boy, when I put these on, I feel almost nothing. It, it's honestly incredible that and the combination with the the fly plate i guess that's another factor figure the classic nike fly plate plate the carbon plate that nike puts in here combined with their foam i mean i don't know how nike does it but it's just some type of combination between the plate and the foam zoom x foam i believe nike calls it 
And so the combination of that carbon fiber plate and the Zoom X foam, man, it's not, it's not quite as bouncy as the Alpha Flies. I think that's just because the Alpha Flies have that little air pod, but you still definitely do get a nice spring-like effect and it really does feel like you're running on springs. Now moving on to another one of my likes, I guess, is that the mesh right there. As you guys can see, it is pretty much see-through and it's very breathable. And so if you're running when it's hot outside, you're not gonna sweat too much in these shoes. That's actually one of the downsides I found when I wore, I'm gonna get into this in the next part when I compare it to some of the other super shoes. But I had the A6 Meta Speed Skies and those just, or yeah, Meta Speed Skies, and those just got too hot for me. Whereas these, nice, light, and breathable. And yeah, when you get that spring-like effect, this shoe really is a winner. And now another one of my likes is actually the, the cup, the heel plate, I or not heel plate, but just the heel, the heel cup, I guess it's called. I didn't get any slippage with these and I barely had to tighten these down. These fit perfect to size. I run a nine and a half in pretty much all my shoes. I got actually ordered the nine and nine and a half to see which one felt better. And yeah, the nine and a half was perfect for me. I didn't have to tighten them down really at all. My foot just stayed in there. I didn't have any slippage. So if that's something you're worried about, yeah, I don't think uh, that should be a concern when picking up these shoes. And that's pretty much it, I think, for the likes. Oh, I guess the laces that came on these shoes, I like them, they were nice. But obviously, because I went with the quick tie laces, I don't have them on anymore. But if you are just a marathon runner, then yeah, those were great and I didn't have any issues. I ran on the treadmill, I think, with the laces. I didn't have any trouble with them coming undone or anything like that. So yeah, laces are also a win. So now that we got the likes and dislikes out of the way, let's move on to part three, where I compare it to some of the other super shoes that I've had. As you guys saw in the intro, I have ran in the Nike Alpha Fly 1s. I actually also had the Nike Alpha Fly 2s, and those were the shoes actually I was gonna race in for my last Ironman. However, I ordered them, I tried them on, and they were comfortable, but they were quite a bit heavier, or actually, yeah, a lot heavier than the Vaporfly 3s. But my biggest issue with the Alpha Fly 2s was actually how hard they were to put on. I literally spent a good minute trying to put those shoes on. And I guess for a marathon, that isn't too big of a deal, but when putting your shoes on actually counts towards your time in the actual race, as it does in a triathlon, it's not ideal. And so I sent those back and I picked these up. And I also tried the, uh, as I mentioned, the ASIC Meta Speed Skies. And I like those. Actually, I was also about to go with those before I got these. But when, after I picked these up, as I mentioned, I just found that these just had a bit more of that bounce. They were a bit lighter as well. And the biggest issue I had, as I mentioned with the ASICs, is that my foot just, it just sweat too much. It got way too hot and I was afraid of getting blisters, my foot swelling up too much. And so with these, with that nice, breathable mesh upper, it just felt quite a bit more comfortable. And as I mentioned, the, the roll you got, the bounce, not necessarily the roll. I think I actually got more of a roll with the ASIC shoes. And by roll, I mean, you know, when you when you land, there isn't that, because the drop is so minimal, your foot doesn't feel like it's rolling as much as it did with the Alpha Fives and the ASICs. However, the bounce, the responsiveness I got from these shoes was much greater than with the ASICs and the, or no, it wasn't greater than the Alpha Fives, but it was greater than the ASICs. Speaking of responsiveness and stability, that was another big difference I saw between these, the version one, so the Vaporfly version one, which are pretty old now, and the Alpha Fly version one, where these were just a little bit more stable, I think has a little bit wider of a heel there. And so in my Ironman race, it was pretty flat, but there were definitely some turns, some corners, and I didn't have any issues with my ankle rolling or anything like that. And I also had my great friend Alice, she ran in these shoes as well, and she had the same experience. No issues with them not being stable. I know that's been an issue in some of the past versions of the shoe, but yeah, honestly, they perform great, and I couldn't have asked for a better race shoe. Now that we've gone over the facts and figures, what I like and I dislike, and 
a little quick comparison between these and some of the other super shoes, primarily the ASIC Meta Speed Skies and the Vaporfly 1 and 2s because, well, those are the only other super shoes I've tried. Time to wrap this up with my final thoughts and conclusions. At the end of the day, I love them. I think they are a great racing shoe. If you've raced in Nikes in the past and have liked them, enjoyed them, then I would definitely recommend picking up your Vaporfly 3s. As I mentioned, compared to the Alpha Fly 2s, you may get a little bit more bounce from the Alpha Fly 2s because those do come with that AirPod in the front. However, I just, I used to be a huge Alpha Fly guy. I tried on the Vaporfly 1s and the Alpha Fly 1s and I went with the Alpha Flies, but now I'm definitely leaning more towards the Vaporfly, especially with the added stability to the Vaporfly 3s. That was one of the downsides to the Vaporfly 1s. I don't think I ever tried out the Vaporfly 2s. But yeah, that combined with the fact that they are much easier to put on, I am on team Vaporfly now. And besides that, I mean, if you haven't worn Nikes before, I'd definitely try them out. I think they're a great race shoe, super shoe. But at the end of the day, when you're at that top level or top of the line, you're buying the $250, $300 shoes, they're all going to be relatively similar. I do think, though, that Nike, Nike is the best out there. They do something with the carbon fiber plate and that Zoom X foam, that combination that I don't think any other shoe company out there has matched quite just yet. I think they're definitely getting close. Uh, I was very impressed with the ASIC shoe, as I mentioned. I haven't tried the On Super shoe. I think they're going to be coming out with one relatively soon. I'll definitely be having an eye out on those when they come out. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys have tried out these shoes, what you guys thought. I also am going to be picking up a pair of the Nike Pegasus 40, I believe. That, that's uh, what number they're on. If you want to see a review of those as well, let me know in the comments down below. Hope you guys enjoyed this review of the brand new Nike Vaporfly 3s. And as I mentioned, go ahead, hit that subscribe button, follow along my triathlon journey. Going pro one day, hopefully relatively soon here. Yeah, more... Uh, Sure of you videos. You never know. <laughs> we'll see you guys in the next one.